x plus three equal to five, find x. A lot of people will do it this way. They will shift the three to the right and say x now becomes five minus three and x equal to two. When I ask them what exactly did they do, they will tell me that, hey, I shifted the plus three to the right side and that became minus three. That's the rule of equations. When you shift something from left-hand side to right-hand side, positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive, plus beca uh, multiplication becomes division, division becomes multiplication, and that's how it works. Now, for somebody who has mastered algebra, they don't really think too much about this, this is fine, but somebody who's struggling with equations and algebra, this is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Why? Problem number one is that there seems to be no logic to this. Why is it when you're shifting plus becomes minus? Like why, who came up with that rule? And then why is it plus becomes minus and not say division or something like multiplication? Like how do I remember this? It feels like I have to rote memorize all of these things. And when you have to rote memorize things, you'll start hitting math. But the second bigger rule is that this is blatantly wrong. <laughs> There is nothing in math that tells you that there are no such thing as shifting rules. There are no rules that say positive becomes negative when it goes from left to right. No, this is wrong. So we are teaching wrong stuff and there's a lot of wrong, this is myth when it comes to math. So teachers and parents, here's a humble request. Whenever you see somebody shifting, please correct it that there's no such rule. So what's the real thing? In reality, there's only one simple rule of equations. If there's an equal to sign, then whatever you add, subtract, multiply, divide on one side, on the right hand side, let's say, left hand side, let's say, you have to add, subtract, multiply, and divide the same thing on the right hand side. That's it, because the equal to sign has to hold. That's the only thing you have to teach your kids when it comes to what it, equations and algebra, um, at least introduction to algebra. That's it. And then things become really fun. So let's redo this. Let's redo this. So x plus three equal to five. How do you find x? Your goal is to try and isolate x. So you ask the students, how can you isolate x? How can you get rid of that three? Try different methods, right? So maybe they would say, hmm, maybe I'll divide by three on both sides. Go for it, let them do that. So if I divide by three on both sides, I will get x plus three divided by three equal to five divided by three. This is a perfectly valid operation. Algebra works, equation works, but is it useful? Well, the moment the kid does this, let them explore. Maybe they'll split this, maybe they'll, maybe they'll go ahead with this, ask other people to comment on it. Let them explore what happens. Let them hit a wall, let them hit, them a, let them hit the dead end. Let them do that. And maybe they'll realize, okay, maybe this is too long, maybe this is not the right way to do that. What else can you do? I need to get rid of that three. Can you multiply, can you divide, can you add, maybe you subtract, what number to subtract? Let them go ahead and try a few things and eventually they will probably stumble upon, I subtract three on both sides. So you subtract three on both sides and you see x plus three minus three gives you x plus zero, which is x, gives you five minus three and therefore x equal to two. This is richer because kids can do a lot of trial and error. This is fun because kids can try a few things. In fact, there are more than one ways to arrive at the right answer. You could have divided by three and you could have still arrived at the right answer. You could have, so multiple approaches means that's always great. Some people can try different approaches and that's always fun. You don't have to rote memorize anything over here, which means you'll start falling in love with that subject. So please, whenever you're teaching algebra, teaching equations, teach it this way, do not teach the shifting rules. But that finally brings us to the question, where did the shifting rules come from? Like, if that's not true, where did it come from? Well, you can see when you're subtracting three on both sides and you're getting x equal to five minus three, it kind of feels like this three went on to the right-hand side and became negative. It feels like that because you're skipping these steps. And our brains love to skip steps and come up with patterns. And therefore, we like to come up with this new, it feels like this, hey, this is shifting happening. And so we come up with these rules, and if we come up with these steps, and that is easier to teach, it's all along, it's, it's, it's there everywhere, and therefore I think this is how it got stuck. 
But just because something is easier to teach and something is methodical and step-by-step -step doesn't mean it's correct. Always go back to the fundamentals and question everything that you're teaching. So you teach this way and kids will have a lot of fun trying out a few operations on both sides of the equation and they'll eventually learn and master how to solve equations.